Hey guys, Ray here from Two Gaming Girls, and in today's video, we're going to learn some UI tips and tricks in Eco. Let's get started. So my first suggestion with dealing with some UI tips and tricks is to customize your interface in the first place. So we're going to open up a number of windows right here. And you would have looked at all of these in the tutorial, but what I suggest you do is move these and using the corners or the sides, so this is a corner or the side, resize everything so that it fits what you want. You can also adjust these, pull them in. Maybe you want something like that, or maybe you want it over here, and this down here. So whatever you want to do, my first suggestion is to resize your windows. Next, we're going to look at chat itself. So this window has a lot going on in it. We're going to blow it up a little bit more. You can see this just it's really hard to see what you want to see. So my next suggestion is to customize chat itself. If it's green, it means that this channel is highlighted and active. If we click on it, then we can deselect it and it will disappear from our view over here. Anytime you have something hidden, you will still be able to go back and see it. As you can see in the crafting window, two things have queued that we have not seen. So if we click on them now, we can see all the crafting things and that will disappear. So the next thing we're going to talk about is some chat commands. And the first one is very important. It's the unstuck command and it's slash unstuck right into chat, hit enter, and it will pop you up to the ground level wherever that may be. In this case, it's the top of my stockpile. So another one that you might want to use, especially when you first come on, is we're going to hit enter to bring up our chat line, hit slash players. This allows you to see exactly who is on at this time. The next command we're going to cover is how to whisper someone. There's multiple ways to do this. One, to pull up your chat window and click on someone. Hi Tam. So if we do that, we can whisper Tam. Over here on the left, if we click on hidden and open that up, you'll see that the chat channel Tamrixa is down here and it's going to be blue with this little circle icon. If we click on that, it'll bring it up here and we can have this turned on or not along with everything else. Anytime I want to hide it again, I can either click on the X and drop it down or just switch to a different channel. So another way you can whisper someone is to type directly into that. So we're going to type, let's go back to general. And we're going to type at Tam Rixa. Hi Tam again. So that's the second way to whisper. You can type in and use the at sign, the at symbol to reach someone. Now let's say you want to pay someone remotely without having to actually travel to their store or them to yours. Maybe it's not something um, you want to do in the contract for it. It's not something you want to do um, with the store. Maybe it's you just feel like this person did something awesome and you want to give them, you want to pay them some money for their, their effort. Or maybe you've worked out some other deal. Again, you don't want to use the store or the contract board. So to do that, you're going to use the slash pay command. To do that, you're going to type in slash pay space the person's name, comma, how much you want to give them, comma, and then the name of the currency. In this case, I think the default is always the person's name and credit. Make sure there's no spaces between the name of the person, the amount, and the credit that you want to give them and hit enter. Now, if I hit tab, we click on trades, we can see that we gave 10 credits to Tam. The last chat command we're going to cover is the slash mark command. Now this is useful for making name markers. Of course you can click on M and you can pull up your map and you can go ahead and say drop a waypoint and it will drop a waypoint there. Then you can close it, back up, tab, right click and change the name. Or something a lot simpler than doing all that is to just simply go to the spot you want, hit enter slash mark 
and then name it, whatever you want to name it. Now it shows the waypoint's been added, and if we back up, we can see there's the waypoint I added. Now you will have to still tab onto it and change the color if you want to do something like that or to remove it. But that's much faster method than going through the map way. Speaking of faster ways to do things, often out in the world you'll lose track of things. For instance, your small cart probably have lost that or will lose it soon. So instead of searching around, walking endlessly, you can right click on the deed, hover over the name of that item, you'll see the coordinates and then you can click on it and it will show you where it is on the map and it will actually leave a waypoint for you automatically. So now if we look over here, this 54 meters away is actually my wooden cart. This technique works for just about anything in game as well, anything that you can hover over. For instance, if we pull up the store menu, uh, Gabe's Food and Furniture, don't know where it is, hover over it, it tells you the courts, click on that, it will show up on the mini map just like the other thing. If you're looking for a particular person, where am I? Hover over my name, there I am at those courts. So this is another useful trip to kind of find where things are, where people are. So the next thing we're going to cover is how to split a stack. So let's say we want to move some of this coal from the furnace into the kiln. Well, if we just drag it, of course, it's just going to pretty much look like it swapped places. But maybe we just want to move five from here into this one. You're going to hold down shift and left click to bring up this menu. Then you move the slider to wherever you want. And then you hover over the icon right here, click and drag it to where you want. And now you have split a stack. So most people know that you can queue multiple things at once. You can actually queue up to five things at any one time. If there's something that you are missing resources for, you can simply just come back, drop those in, and it will work towards them. Anything it can't do, it will skip over and continue on to the next one that it actually can finish. But what some may not realize is that you can actually swap this order. Maybe we want this kiln to finish first. So we can click and drag it to the first place it will begin working on this. Now here we don't have enough material, so it's skipping this one and moving on to that. If you shift these in any kind of order, you do not lose the progress on the one that was working on before. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and if you did, please like and subscribe and leave us some comments, and please come back again and check out some more eco how-to videos. Take care.